on forgiveness. And we began to look at that a little bit as I focus on number two is bitterness. So the main focus last Sunday was bitterness. And I did mention last Sunday that bitterness is from the Greek word that is called bikros. And it means a sharp pain, a sharp hurt or bitterness from the dictionary meaning could be termed as a feeling of hurt, a feeling of pain, a feeling from disappointment, a feeling from betrayal, a feeling from rejection. All of these can stir up bitterness in the heart of a man. And last Sunday, we look at two case study. Number one was the case study, was the case study of Absalom. How Absalom became bitter and he killed his brother Amnon. And also another example that would have looked at would have been the person of John the Baptist. In Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus was born and he went to John the Baptist to be baptized. The same John the Baptist saw Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And guess what? Fast forward into time. John the Baptist became bitter about Jesus. And guess what? He sent some of his disciples. Can you go ask him if he is the king or we should expect another savior? How can this man that said yesterday, behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world, all of a sudden is asking the same person, are you the king? Are you the Messiah? Should we expect another? Taking a closer look into their history, why and what make John the Baptist ask those questions were because of seeds of bitterness that came out of jealousy, that came out of envy, and some other occurrences within life. Today, I will just take one more case study and we'll be looking at how do I handle bitterness. Has any one of us been bitter before? I have as a pastor several times. I remember I was telling my wife, myself and my wife, we traveled to preach for a pastor friend in England in Halo. And I was telling her a story of a family that told me the man was working in Chevron, a oil and gas company. And they said to me, Pastor, my husband is to retire, but they don't want to pay him his gratuity. Can you join to fast and pray? Let them pay. When they pay, we will give you an offering. Wow. How much are they going to pay? Several millions of naira. Really? That will be a hundred, a thousands of euros. I joined them in prayers. We began to fast and pray. I was praying with them almost every week. I will recharge my mobile VoIP to pray with them for at least an hour. We began to pray and trust God. And the time came, they paid the money. And they said, Pastor, can you send your account number? Of course, gladly I did. Until tomorrow, I have not heard from them. (laughs) (laughs) So I was sharing with my wife, how do you feel as a pastor when you fasted, you prayed, and the breakthrough came? And the people, they call you, Pastor, join us to thank God they've paid. Send your account number. And you never heard from them. Will you be happy as a pastor? Spiritually, yes. Physically, no. You will be bitter. So you see that as humans, people get bitter. And issues of life, occurrences of life can cause bitterness. Today, we'll be looking at a person called Aitofet. Aitofet is a case study we'll look at how he mismanaged bitterness and it cost, and it cost him his life. And in that regard, we'll look at how do I handle bitterness? Because in life, as we deal and relate with people, people will disappoint us. People will hurt us. People will frustrate us. Only God is trusted 110%. Only God can be over-trusted. Only God can say with you, Pastor, I am with you, and he will remain with you. Men will tell you, Pastor, I am with you, and a time will come, or a time will come. You will look back, you won't see them. And you ask, what has happened? And they begin to tell you story. We'll be reading from 
2 Samuel chapter 12, chapter 15, verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 15, we will look at verse 12, and then we will look at the same 2 Samuel chapter 15, 16, verse 20 to 23. A couple of scripture as we look on number one. Who is Ahithophet? From scripture, let's look at the person called Ahithophet, some people will call him Ahithophet, depending on your pronunciation, all of them is right. Ahithophet has found this, where we'll be looking at chapter 15, verse 12. If you found it, you can please read for us. And Absalom sent for Ahithophet. And Absalom sent for Ahithophet, yes. The, the Gilonite. Yes. David's counselor. David's counselor. Let's take it one by one as we begin to look at the portfolio of Ahithophet. Ahithophet number one is a Gileonite. Number two, Ahithophet is David's counselor. Can you continue to read, sir? David's counselor. Yes. From his city, even from Gilo. Yes. Where he offered sacrifices and the conspiracy was strong. Okay. Yes, you are right. Yes. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. Amen. So you see that number one, Absalom, Absalom is a Gileonite that talks from his place where he is from. Absalom also was David's counselor. If you study the life of David, one of his most trusted counselor was Absalom. And any counsel that Absalom gave, uh, not Absalom to say, Ahitophel to say, any counsel that Ahitophel gives to David, he takes it to the end. Why? Because his counsel was like one that I've heard from God. Absalom also was an influential man. He was very influential. Absalom also looking at his portfolio is a devout worshipper. Absalom is a devout worshipper. Let's go to the same second Samuel chapter 16. We'll be looking at verse 20 to 23. We are looking more into the person of Absalom and then we'll look at what happened that he became bitter with David and what happened thereafter. Yes, sir. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Yes. Give counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Just hold on there, sir. Let's take it a little bit further. Remember that in Genesis chapter 13, Absalom was bitter. And few reasons why Absalom was bitter in Genesis chapter 15 was because his sister Tamar was raped or was slept with by Amnon and David his father did nothing. Absalom went to David and he said to David, Father, my brother has laid with my sister and he expected that David would have punished him. David would have rebuked him. David would have done something about it. But guess what? David kept quiet as if nothing happened. And Absalom did not say anything, neither good nor bad. But guess what? That thing that happened pained Absalom. And he said to his sister Tamar, Tamar, don't worry. Just go in peace and stay well. Eat, drink, and be merry. But guess what? Absalom was bitter. He kept that issue for two years. And one day came, he said to his servant in 1 Samuel chapter, 2 Samuel 13, that when you shall go to the party organized by Amno, when he is merry and is happy, give him wine. Let him get drunk and kill him. Exactly the thing the servant of Absalom did to Amno. Why? Because Abs um, Absalom was bitter. He killed Amno because of bitterness. But guess what? Absalom was still angry. Why was he angry? David did not do anything. Why will my father not do anything about this? And the time came that Absalom got the opportunity to take over the throne of David. And what did he do? 
he began to look for David's men. One of his men was Ahithophet. So Absalom sent for Ahithophet. Can you join my camp? And Ahithophet agreed to join Absalom's camp. Ahithophet joined Absalom's camp. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, chapter 15, verse 12 that we read from earlier, it says, and the conspiracy increased. Why did the conspiracy increase? Because a man of influence, Absalom had people, but when Ahithophet joined Absalom, the multitude, the conspiracy increased and became strong. Bitterness is very deceitful. Bitterness is very cruel. So when Ahithophet joined Absalom against David, Ahithophet now asked Absalom, can you give me a counsel? Give me an advice. Advise me what do we do so we can take over the kingdom of my father. And let's hear the counsel Ahithophet gave to Absalom. That is where you are reading from in 2 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 20. Then Ahithophet said to Absalom, then said Absalom to Ahithophet, continue sir. From verse 21. 21. And Ahithophel yes. said unto Absalom, Go yes. in unto thy father's concubines, yes. he hath left to keep the house. Yes. And all Israel shall hear that thou art, thou art abort, abort of thy father. Yes. Which shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. Yes. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines. In the sight of all Israel, and the and the counsel of Ahithophel, which he which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and Absalom. Amen. Look at that last statement or sentence there, or the last the the third sentence there, from verse twenty three. The Bible says the counsel that Ahithophel do give is as if a man has heard or has spoken as the oracle of God. If someone that will advise you, it will look as if God is the one speaking to you. This same man, Ahithophel, is not telling Absalom, go sleep with your father's wives in the open. Does it sound like a godly counsel? Not at all. Ahithophet was a godly man. He has integrity. He is, he is someone that give counsel like someone that heard from God. But here he is giving a devilish counsel, an evil counsel to Absalom against David. Why will he do that? Let's take a little bit back into Ahithophet's genealogy. Let's look at his genealogy a little bit. That will take us to 1 Samuel chapter 23, no, 2 Samuel to save, chapter 23, verse 24, and we will go back to chapter 11, 3 to 4. 2 Samuel 23, verse 34. We want to look a little bit on the genealogy of Ahithophel. 2 Samuel 23, verse 34. Then we will go to 2 Samuel 11, 3 to 4. Samuel verse 24. Yes. 23, 24. Yes. The son of Ahab by Yes. The son of the Makachek. Yes. The son of the Amen. Yes. Remember that when we read from 1 Samuel 15, we read so if you look at it from here, it's saying that Eliab, the son of Ahithophet, the Gileonite. Now let's go again to 2 Samuel 11, 3 and 4. We are looking at the genealogy of Ahithophet. 11, 3 and 4. 2 Samuel 11, verse 3. And David sent an inquiry after the woman. Yes. And one said, Is it not this Bathsheba and yes. the daughter of Eliam, yes. the wife of Uriel, the 
they hate it. They hated her. Yes. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came into the head, into him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. Verse five. No, just hold on there. Okay. Thank you. Remember that in verse one, the Bible talks about it was time that kings go for battle. But David stayed back. And David only at his balcony, if I will use that word, and he saw a woman taking her bath. And David sent someone to take the woman. That woman that David took, her name is Belcheba. Belcheba happened to be the son of Eliab. And Eliab is the son of Ahitophel. So Ahitophel is the grandfather of Belcheba. Do we get the picture? Ahitophel is the grandfather of Belcheba. Bethsheba is the wife of Uriah. So when kings go to battle, Uriah was at the battle, but David didn't go. And David sent men to take Bethsheba and slept with her. To make the things worse, she took in, if you read the story, she got pregnant. And David decided to kill the husband. He told the soldier, put him at the battlefront and let him be killed. Let's leave that story for another day. Ahitophel is the grandfather of Bethsheba. And this happened to her. Everyone would have expected that Ahitophel will resign. Ahitophel will say, oh, I, re I revoke. Oh, I say no to this injustice. But guess what Ahitophel did? He kept quiet, but he was bitter. He was angry. He was hot that his own granddaughter <laughs> has been taken from her husband. His own granddaughter has been taken into the king's house and the husband is displaced. What, what kind of injustice is that? If you read that story further, Nathan the prophet came to David and he said to David a parable. He said there was a man that has a hundred sheep. A lot of sheep and another man has only one sheep. And the man came and left the one with hundred and went to take the one from the other one. And David got angry and said, no, that king, that person must be killed. And the prophet told him, you are that king. And he broke down in tears. But guess what? We are focusing on the person of Ahithophet here. Ahithophet was angry. He was bittered. For years, he was still serving with David. Now he got opportunity to pay back David what he did to his granddaughter. What did he do? Number one, he gave that counsel to Absalom. Go into your father's concubines and sleep with them. Why did he give that kind of counsel? It was out of bitterness. Not because he loved Absalom, not because he wanted Absalom to take the kingdom, but because he wanted to revenge. That is one thing that bitterness does. Bitterness seeks for opportunity to revenge. Bitterness seeks for opportunity to destroy. Bitterness looks for opportunity to always make sure that the person pay back. So are you did not give godly counsel to Absalom at that point, all because of bitterness. What is it that Ahitophel would have done differently? Is he would have learned how to handle bitterness. Learn how to handle bitterness. So that is where or what will lead us to our focus for today. How do I manage and handle bitterness? I have seen people divorce in marriages not because of anger, not because they are not compatible, but because of accumulated bitterness. Accumulated bitterness. They accumulate it, accumulate it, and the day it explodes, you will be wondering, is it just this little thing I did or said that makes this happen? No, it is accumulated over time. How... Or what is it that Ahithophel would have done differently to make a difference or to conquer and get away with bitterness? Number one is found in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9, verse 12. Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. 
You will see another example of that in Luke chapter 11. Because of time, we will just take Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. One of the time in the life of Jesus, the disciples came to him. And they asked him one question. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And as Jesus began to give the guidelines for teaching and telling the disciples how to pray, he got to verse 12 of that scripture. Can anyone read for us verse 12? Yeah, and, and for, verse 12 says, and forgive us our debts as yes. we forgive our debtors. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some other translation will say, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. The reason is because nobody is perfect. Jesus encourages us to forgive. But you know the irony of it is that some people will forgive and they will not let go. I, I forgive you but I'm still holding you hostage of that weakness or of that thing you did. Jesus teaching, if you want to deal with bitterness, that thing that makes you bitter, that person that makes you bitter, you must forgive. Because if you don't forgive from your heart, there are people they forgive with their mouth and not from their heart. Mm. Their mouth will tell you, oh, I've forgiven him. Oh, I've forgiven her. Oh, I've forgiven them. But in their heart, they are crying. In their heart, they are thinking, what will I do to show him pepe? Let me use the African word. <laughs> what will I do to deal with him? What will I do to make him know or to make her know that the next time you don't do this to me? They forgive or they forgive with their mouth, but in their heart, they've not. Jesus said, for you to deal with bitterness, for you to get your prayers answered, for you to enjoy the manifest power and blessings of God, you must learn to forgive. You must learn to forgive. And you don't just forgive yourself. You forgive people that have sinned against you. Three dimensions of forgiveness. Number one, every man needs forgiveness from God because all have sinned and falling short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 6. For the wages of sin is death. Everyone needs forgiveness from God. Number two dimension of forgiveness. Everyone needs to forgive themselves. Because you are not perfect. There are times you tell yourself, today I'm going to pray. And you will not pray. <laughs> today I'm going to fast. And you will not fast. There are times you tell yourself, I will do this, I will do this. And you see yourself. Not keeping up to your word. What do you do? You forgive yourself. You make mistakes many times. You are a human. You will fall several times. But thank God the Bible says the righteous shall fall many times, several times. But guess what? He shall rise again. So you learn to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of the wrong decisions you make. Forgive yourself of the wrong actions you took. Forgive yourself of whatever that is making you feel guilty, feel pain. You keep blaming yourself. Oh, if I had known. Oh, if I had known. The past is gone. Forgive yourself of the past. Brace up and embrace the future. The last dimension of forgiveness is forgiveness of others and receiving forgiveness from others. You forgive others and you also receive forgiveness from others. Jesus teaching. He said, and forgive us our debts. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sinned against us. Another dimension or another way to handle bitterness is leave vengeance to God. Leave vengeance to God. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Romans chapter 12. Yes. And dearly beloved, and yes. not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, yes. vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the, I will repay, said the Lord. Hallelujah. For it is written, vengeance is whose? Vengeance is of God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he said, I will repay, says the Lord. 
Avenge not for yourself. Avenge not yourself. If Absalom have left vengeance to God, he would have not killed Amnon. If Absalom have left vengeance to God, he would have not considered how to avenge his brother for his sister or how to, how to, how to avenge his father. But because he took vengeance into his hands, what did he do? He killed his brother. What did he do? He conspired against his father. And Absalom conspiracy began to go strong and strong. But if he had left vengeance to God, also Ahithophet, if Ahithophet has left vengeance to God, one thing I've learned in life is that God is a judge. Though his judgment looks slow in the eyes of men, they will think that, oh, God is very slow. He does not give instant karma. No, God gives his judgment with justice. The Bible says that don't be deceived. God is not mock. Whatever a man sow, that he shall reap. So time and chances, God will always avenge. Aitophet was bitter. He did not leave vengeance to God. And what did he do? He gave cancer to Absalom and that cancer went through. If you look on to the story of Ahitophet on how it ended, you will see in 2 Samuel chapter 17, let's just look at it. 2 Samuel 17 verse 14 and verse 23. 2 Samuel chapter 14 verse 2 Samuel 17, verse 14, and verse 23. We are looking at two verses there in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 17, verse 14, and verse 23. Verse 14. Yes. Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hoshia, the Archet, is better than the counsel of Aitophel. Yes. For the Lord has appointed the defeat, the defeat, the God, the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Awesome. Then, Jump to verse 23. Verse 23. Yes. And when Ahithophel saw, saw that his counsel was not followed, he sat led his axe his yes. and arose and got him, and got him home. And got him home to his house, yes. to his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in in the in the sepulchre of his father. Amen. So see how Absalom ended, just because he refused to forgive, just because he refused to let go, just because he refused to leave vengeance for God. And the Bible says in verse 14 that we've read from, that someone else's cancer was better than that of Absalom. And what did he do? He decided to kill himself. Bitterness is poisonous. Bitterness is very destructive. And Absalom killed himself all because of accumulated bitterness that he refused to let go. I will just rush through other ways. Time will fail me to explain them. Other ways to handle bitterness is that know that God is a God of judgment and justice. Also know that whatever a man sow, he will reap. Now another way to handle bitterness is that express your grief and pains and hurt. Whenever you feel hurt, whenever you feel pained, whenever you feel disappointed, Instead of smiling and keeping it in your heart, let the person know. Oh, excuse me, I'm not happy with the way you spoke to me. Let me tell this funnily. While I was growing up, my friends, they decided to give me a nickname. And I wasn't happy with the nickname. Let me not call the nickname because I'm in church. <laughs> so they were not... They didn't know that I wasn't happy with the nickname. But they felt, oh, we are just friends and then we can wash each other, we can roast each other, you know, those kind of things. 
So when they see me, they will start calling me that name. I now called one of them. Excuse me, please, I don't like that name. He, he thought I was joking. We went out again, and he saw me. He started calling that name. In my heart, I was angry, and I was bitter. I wished I could punch him. <laughs> I went to another of our friends. I was like, excuse me, please. I, I don't feel comfortable with that name you people call so can you please stop calling me that name? When I insist that they stop, over time, they stopped. If I didn't tell them to please stop calling me that name, they will continue. To them, they are joking. To them, it is play. But in my heart, I am hungry. So what am I trying to say? Feel free to express your disappointment. It is normal. Express your pain. Express it, but do it in love. Because there are times you may want to prove a point and instead of resolving the matter, it will complicate and escalate it. So you need the wisdom of God and the love of God to express your feelings, your pain, your anger in love. Number two, express it at the right time. Because there is time for everything. As at the point I begin to study my wife, that when she's happy, it's the best time to ask for something. When she's happy, and you just tell her that, oh, can you do this? Ask me anything. So what do I do? If I want to solve some issues that I know that will make her emotional, I will wait till the time she's happy. Because I already knew that at that time, it will be easier, her mind is open. But if I do it at the wrong time, is the right thing done at the wrong time? It becomes wrong. So what am I trying to say? Express your grief, your pains, your hurt, your disappointment with love and by the wisdom of God. It makes life better. Two more. Don't hold the issues that makes you bitter over time. Don't keep holding on to it. There are people that they, they hardly find, they find it difficult to let go. That issue that has happened 10 years back, they keep holding to it. They keep going back to it. They keep going back to it. So when you keep holding to it, it becomes difficult to let go. Lastly, how do you handle bitterness? Ask God for help. Ask the Holy Spirit for help because there are some issues in life you cannot easily handle by yourself. You know as a Christian, as a child of God, it is good to forgive. But when you remember the thought of it, you just begin to cry. You just begin to feel emotional. Not because you don't want to forgive or you don't want to let go. You want to, but it, it makes, it just brings you a fresh wound. Let me say this funny story. While we're growing up in Africa as a teenager, there is this swimming pool we used to go in Delta State. They call it Delta State Company. The swimming pool you pay when you go if your father or your mother is not working there. And this day, myself and my street boys, we gather ourselves, let's go and swim. We got there, they said the pool is full, we cannot swim, and we should pay. We want to pay, they said we cannot pay because the pool is full. And there is another side in the pool that they've broken the, road, the gate. So people jump in from there. My friends, they said, let's go that way, undress, and jump in. I'm like, oh, okay. I followed them. Getting there, I forgot that I have not changed my short me <laughs> swimming shorts. So my friends asked me, take your shirt and jump in. I was like, I've not taken off my... They're like, oh, you are too slow. They started like talking down on me. I wanted to prove I am a man or a boy or name it like I'm smart. Tried to pull, pull off. The first guy went to the second guy. As I was going in, part of my shot hooked to the, <laughs> to the gate. The security guy sighted me and he started running towards me. Me, I'm struggling to pull off, pull this. The security guy was coming. Everybody in the pool stopped swimming. They were watching the security guy. He ran to me. I forgot to jump back. I started running around the pool. 
I came back to that point. I did not see the, the place. I ran again. Then as I ran, some girls that as teenagers we were chasing in the street then, they were in the pool. They were all looking at me. <laughs> I ran back there. I didn't see the place. I was like, oh my God. I stood there. Then I, I saw the place. I tried to jump back. The guy got hold of me and took my clothes. We went home. Before we went home, we came back. The guy said, okay, we need to pay, blah, blah, blah. We resolved the issue. I got back. When I remembered, my friends asked me to jump when I wasn't ready to jump. It makes me feel bad. Then you will not get back to that same street. The guess that you've been feeling like a superman too. <laughs> They are all like telling your stories and all of that. When I remember that, it just brings me pain. I felt my friends planned it. They know that I may not be able to. As I grow over time, I discover the easiest way to let that bitterness out of my mind is to let it go. Is to let it go. So when I did that by the help of God, I was free from bitterness. On my own, before I became saved, I could not. I never followed them to that pool anymore because I could not trust them. What am I trying to say? Ask God for help. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Jesus leaving us, he said that I will send you and help him. I will want you to bow your head. Have you been bittered in any way? Are you struggling with anything that makes you bitter? Ask the Holy Spirit for help. Is there anyone you need to forgive? Or do you need to forgive yourself? Or you've decided to take vengeance on anyone and you are saying, Lord, I've heard your word. Vengeance belongs to you. I'm leaving it all to you. I trust your judgment. I trust you are a God of justice. Talk to the Lord in prayers. Talk to the Lord in prayers. In any way the word of the Lord has ministered to you, talk to the Lord in prayers. If you are not saved, if you are not born again, it will be difficult to enjoy the help of the Holy Spirit. So this is also a time to say, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to enjoy the help that comes from you that comes with you, that comes from only you, and help me to conquer this bitterness. Help me to be able to handle bitterness as I journey through life. Ask of the Lord for help in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Patient of days, we thank you for your word that we've heard. It is my prayer that this word that we've heard would minister grace salvation, healing in the name of Jesus. Anyone at the reach of my voice that has made a decision for you, Lord, I ask your grace be released. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will give wisdom to everyone to undo every form of disappointment, bitterness, betrayal, backstab, hurt, pains in the name of Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give a clap offering to Jesus?